Hello and welcome to No Spin. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Tonight, Rajya Sabha elections used to be a snooze fest, but now they're full of intrigue. With polls on Friday, MLAs in Rajasthan, Haryana and Maharashtra have been whisked away to resorts to prevent horse trading. We'll be joined by Sachin Pilot of the Congress on the keen contest that's suddenly emerging in Rajasthan in particular. And later, the Facebook whistleblower Sophie Zhang speaks to us on how she red flagged fake accounts linked to a BJP MP, but Facebook India refused to take them down. Are social media platforms manipulating all of us. That's coming up shortly. But first, the Rajya Sabha elections to 16 seats in four states take place this Friday. And the entry of two media barons backed by the BJP in Rajasthan and Haryana has queered the pitch for Congress candidates. This is important because infighting in the state units of the Congress has given the BJP an opportunity to embarrass or to try to embarrass the Congress party. In Rajasthan, there are three Congress candidates, Randeep Surjewala, Mukul Vasnik and Pramod Tiwari. Now, Subhash Chandra, the head of the Z group, who's been uh, nominated as an independent backed by the BJP, he made a sensational claim today that eight Congress MLAs will cross-vote in his favor. Now, the Congress has been complaining about horse trading and malpractices, which is why they've already shifted 40 of their MLAs or more than 40 of them to an Udaipur resort. And they still need about another two or three MLAs to be sure of victory on all three seats for their candidates. But first, let's listen in to what Subhash Chandra said earlier today. वो 2028 तक तो मुख्यमंत्री नहीं बन सकेंगे आज अगर ये मौका नहीं चुका मौका चुप गए और ये मौका नहीं चुका तो डेफिनेटली उनका 2023 के चुनाव में शायद कुछ हो सके नंबर well, joining us now uh, is senior Congress leader Sachin Pilot uh, on, on this developing story. Uh, first of all, Sachin Pilot, uh, how do you look at Subhash Chandra's claims uh, that he's going to get eight uh, Congress MLAs to cross vote for him? I think it's quite laughable. Mr. Chandra, I think, has been fooled by the BJP into becoming a candidate independent. Uh, and then uh, the numbers are stacked completely against him. And I think this is a good time uh, for Mr. Chandra to realize that he must save his uh, dignity and bow out gracefully uh, as opposed to being humiliated on the 10th when the votes are cast. Because the numbers are clearly in favor of the Congress party. And no matter how much... Uh, attempts he may try to do and by calling MLAs or, or asking to vote for him. The Congress MLAs, the regional parties that support our government and the independent MLAs are all together. In fact, we require 123 MLAs in the House of 200. We have way more than that who will come out and support all our three candidates. So there's absolutely no doubt in our mind. And also, Subhashi, she should understand, this is not a, a TV series or, or, a, or, a, or an entertainment that he's trying to do. This is serious business and uh, no matter what he says, the Congress party's three candidates will romp home with the emphatic victory. Okay, so if everything is so great, and as you say, your candidates will romp home, then why are your MLAs being holed up in a, in a resort in Udaipur? I'm sure it's nice, but obviously you're worried. Not at all. I mean, the BJP has all its MLAs in a hotel. Sadly, this has become a trend for every election, for every party in every state. Uh, ideally, it should not happen, but the thing is, when BJP puts up two candidates, where it can only win one, Clearly, they will try and do some wooing of MLAs, some allurement, some uh, MLAs feel that they don't want, un want unwarranted pressure. And that's why they have to be together. They want to be together. No one is there against their will. It's just that they are in one place so that there are no undue pressures on them. And previously, we've seen uh, the BJP has tried to lure MLAs with all sorts of incentives, etc. And uh, I don't think personally that this is the right way forward. But unfortunately, this has become part of the course. But Again, is that happening? Is concerned. that happening? Is there? I mean, are you saying that the BJP is trying to do that? That it's trying to to lure your MLAs with all kinds of inducements? Like what? I mean, are, is that happening? Are people trying to reach out? If, if Mr. Chandra is claiming he's going to get more votes than he than he should get, what does that mean? He should clearly spell out who are these people that he's approached on what basis. The party, the the, the, the regulation is very clear, Didi. Every single party MLA has to show his or her vote when they cast it, right? So there's no question of a party MLA doing cross-voting. It doesn't happen. It's the independents who don't have to show the votes and they can cast their vote. Uh, and in fact, if they show the vote, then the votes get disqualified. Uh, it's a strange logic, but that's how it is today. So for all party MLAs have to vote according to the whip. The whip is for the party candidate. So I really don't understand the calculation that he has made or some other people independent who are making. Uh, as far as Aisan is concerned, we have more than numbers that we require. Now, actually, there's a specific reference that Subhash Chandra Sachin Pilot has made about you uh, in his press conference that he held this evening. 
uh, you know, he, he said how, you know, your father was his friend, that you have an opportunity, you are a young popular leader, you can use this opportunity, he says, to take revenge or to send a message to the Congress leadership and if you miss this opportunity, you will not be Chief Minister until 2028. What would you like to say? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Chandra, uh, this just shows how hopeless he may have become, uh, trying to reach out to other people across the parties. Uh, he must understand that we have all worked uh, to become MPs and MLAs in our own right. And no one is going to fall for this trap, no matter what he does. This shows that he's clearly desperate and he's clutching at straws. Uh, to my mind, uh, there is no way he would have won earlier. There is no way he'll win on the 10th. And no matter what the BJP or Mr. Chandra try and do, uh, in Haryana and in Rajasthan, both the states, the Congress party candidates will win and will handsomely, I might assure you. But Sachin Pilot, isn't it also a fact that the BJP is doing this because it senses that all is not well even in the Congress camp? In Haryana, for example, you mentioned Haryana. You have someone like Kuldeep Bishnoi, uh, you know, who's, who's sulking. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has apparently tried to reach out to him. Uh, in Rajasthan also, let's face it, you know, all has not been well for some time between you and Mr. Gehlot's camp. So do you think the BJP is taking advantage of these weaknesses within the Congress? Let me assure uh, the BJP that there is no advantage to be taken. They can try what they want, they can put up independent candidates, they can do pressure tactics, etc. All of our MLAs uh, and more will vote for our candidates. Um, the elections are on the 10th, we only have three days left now. So they all know that there is no majority to be had. And you see, it's very clear, the number of MLAs that each party has, uh, you know, is the, is the MPs you can send. So all this clever maneuvering that they're trying to do, I think will yield no result whatsoever. And for Haryana also, we have we need 31 MLAs and we have some independents who are supporting us. And uh, you mentioned Mr. Bishnu his name. He may not have gone to uh, Chhattisgarh, but he will certainly vote for the Congress party. Uh, but uh, can I just ask you on the choice of Rajya Sabha candidates? There's also been a lot of heartburn in your party on that. I mean, look at your state, Rajasthan. It's a state that's actually going into assembly elections as well in the next year and a half or so. And you have three candidates who are all outsiders. Uh, how has that played out? How, how is that being justified? I'm surprised, Nidhi, that you asked me this question as a member of the Congress party. You've never asked Mr. J.P. Nadda why he sent Nirmala Sitaraman to one state, why Venkai Nadi was, was sent to Rajasthan, why Mr. Alphonse came to Rajasthan. National parties have national leaders who come to Rajya Sabha from different states. Dr. Manmohan Singh uh, was MP from uh, Assam, for example. So I think it's, it's pretty obvious that national parties need to send to the upper house people who matter and the people that have been uh, appointed as candidates for the congress party i mean the people with loads of experience mukul vasnik was in charge of rajasthan for nine years uh, mr tiwari has been mp for 10 times so if he's been sent to rajasthan and these decisions happen with consensus the leadership spoke to every state leader in rajasthan spoke to the party and the government and then they came up with a consensus so these are party candidates we are a national party it's not some regional party sending their candidates to across the states. And we have governments in only two states now. So clearly we need to have senior people speak up and be the voice of that state in but the upper house. But you don't house. think that in and an election-bound no state like Rajasthan, it would have been better to have had people from Rajasthan? But I don't buy that argument because these are for the upper house. The regulation is that anybody from any part of the country can contest. And national parties have that advantage that they can place the leaders in different states. So I really see no merit in this argument. And the same applies to Bharti and the party. The BJP sends its leaders from all across the country. I'm surprised why none of you ever asked them that question, that why are you sending X from a different state and Y from a different state? Why are these questions only applicable to the Congress? And we're happy with our choice. All of our MLAs have supported the decision. The state leadership is in, in full uh, agreement with what AIC has decided. So we'll have these three people and they'll all become MPs from Rajasthan. You're, you're saying that you all will romp home, you're in touch with the smaller parties and independents <laughs> as well. You're, you're claiming that they're all on your side. There's also a, a bunch of six MLAs actually who used to uh, belong to the BSP who had merged with the Congress, I think, back in 2019. But their status is still kind of con sort of c contested. Uh, Mayawati, however, has issued a whip to them to vote for, the, for, for Subhash Chandra. How is, uh, how is that being solved? How is that being sort of resolved? These MLAs did fight the election on the symbol of the BSP, but then the entire legislative party, the BSP, six members, then a whole lot of them merged with the Congress party. And the speaker has passed an order on it. Of course, the BSP is free to challenge that order in, in the court, and that will carry on. But as far as the party is concerned, the entire legislative party merged with the Congress, and now they're Congress members. So the Congress whip is applicable on them. Uh, the BSP, of course, is trying to find legal ways to stop that, but it won't hold uh, in the court of law. 
because the entire party lock stock and barrel merged with the congress and the speaker has passed and speaker has great powers in these decisions so i don't think that's uh, contestable there there have also been rumblings in the in in rajasthan sachin pile we've seen uh, some mlas actually in uh, you know considered to be close to mr gehlot who recently you know voiced uh, some dissent on on you know specific issues is everything okay in the rajasthan congress are you and mr gehlot getting you. along well let, now? let me assure you there are all sorts of stories that come in the media people use social media you know to give out messages every mla may have some grouse about the development in that area wanting more budget or some issues with local you know administration but those are all issues that every mla is is allowed to make i think in a in a democratic setup they can air their grievances and the chief minister the party president and all of us have met them and now every single one of those mlas is on board happily and willing to Uh, vote for our candidates, and the entire legislative party plus our supporting MLAs are at one place. They'll be in Jaipur on the tenth. We will all vote for our candidates, and they will all be home with us. So you're saying uh, you need 123, but you are claiming that you all have ma- many more than that on your side. I think we have more than what we require. All right. Let's see what happens on Friday. As I, as I was saying earlier, Rajya Sabha elections used to be really boring, but clearly a lot has changed <laughs> in the last few years. Sachin Pilot, thanks very much. Well, Facebook has been under fire for some time now for not doing enough to crack down on hate speech, toxic content, and manipulated posts. It's a controversy that has raged not just in India but all across the world. In the latest revelations, a whistleblower who worked with the company as a data scientist in 2019, Sophie Zhang. claims that she red flagged a series of fake accounts associated with the congress the aap and the bjp while the ones associated with the congress and aap were taken down a set of fake accounts allegedly linked directly to bjp mp vijay sonkar were not taken down by facebook india officials despite her repeated pleas to do so this is part of documents that zhang submitted to india's parliamentary committee on it affairs last year while members of the panel apparently voted for zhang to come and depose before them parliamentary rules require that foreign nationals have to get permission from the lok sabha speaker but after more than 6 months zhang is still awaiting a response from the lok sabha speaker's office who has refused to respond to her request this only adds to earlier allegations that facebook has been keen not to anger the ruling bjp in 2020 the wall street journal reported how the platform hesitated in complying with the company's hate speech rules to a bjp mla from hyderabad Well, joining us now on NDTV is the Facebook whistleblower Sophie Zhang. Sophie, thank you very much uh, for joining us straight from California. Your revelations have created quite a stir. Describe to us briefly the effort that you made to take down fake and abusive content, and how this was allegedly met with little or no response when it came to the ruling party. Absolutely, thank you, and it's a pleasure to speak with yourself and the Indian people. So, it's, so in my so everything you've heard about me regarding fake my work on fake accounts on Facebook, including in India, was all work that I was doing in my spare time. It was not part of my actual job. I was doing it because it I believed it was important, and no one would replace me if I if I left, and it was no secret to anyone that I was doing it. And so, anyways, in 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 the in the fall and of late 2019, I found several networks of fake accounts across across the political spectrum in India. Eventually, there were five such networks: two were supporting the BJP, two were supporting the Congress, and one supporting the App. So these were across the political spectrum. Um, I I raised them several times during the course of t- late 2019. Eventually, in, 20, the, in December of 2019, I attracted attention and 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 put up a put up a proper task to consider to to to, to consider these problems and qu- and was able to get Facebook to agree to take them down because these were clear violations of Facebook's community standards. And so most of most of the fake accounts were taken down, but when it came to the last network of fake accounts. Facebook stopped because we realized that those fake accounts, which were not money in the first place, it was only fifty-four. It would have been an afterthought if it had not been for what for what happened next. We found that these fifty-four fake accounts were tied to the personal account of MP Vinod Sankar, the mem- honorable member of parliament from Kaushambi, a city member of the BJP, who I understand chairs the standing committee on ethics. 
And so, and so, anyways, as soon as that dis a discovery was made, I could not get an answer or from anyone, even though Facebook had already agreed to take it, the fake accounts down. I first triple-checked my work to make sure they had made, not made, made mistakes. To, in to, for instance, but to verify that that the MP's account had not been hacked. I proposed that we take the fake accounts down and leave the MP unknown because I knew that that would be the simplest course of action that very few people could have legitimate uh, objections to. Right, right, Sophie. So you're saying that they took down the fake accounts associated with the Congress and the AAP, but not the ones associated with the BJP MP. To, to be clear, there were two there were two networks of fake accounts associated with, that were supporting the BJP. One one network who who we were not able to find associations, they took down. The second network, which was associated with the personal account of MP Songkar, Facebook refused to take down. I was never I was never able to get an answer from anyone uh, about about what to do with it, about why the why the hesitancy, because I was only proposing that we take down the fake accounts and leave the MPs account unknown. Sorry to interrupt, Sophie, but how do these inauthentic and fake accounts actually work, and what is the damage that they actually do? Fundamentally, the, the damage it, it, it's, is to drown out the voices of real people, to, 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 to allow public discussion to be dominated not by the people, but, but, but by a small shady cabal of, in, of insiders in the shadows. In the, no one, no one serious defends fake, the use of fake accounts on the merits. The, the, the rooting them out is necessary to protect freedom of speech. Just, just like no, no one can allow all fake bandits to be stuffed in ballot, box, ballot boxes. There is nothing wrong with voting for the party of your choice. But if you stuff ballot boxes with 10,000 illegal ballots for that party, then you are joining out the voices of the people. And that is wrong, no matter what party it is for. And the same principle the same principle applies for the use of IT cells and fake accounts only for the public discussion sphere rather than inductions. Now when you flag this repeatedly with those concerned at Facebook, what happened exactly? I could there were very few people were even willing to acknowledge it. It was like talking to the wall. The closest analogy that comes to mind actually it's how the it's how the the standing committee on IT voted unanimously to invite me to testify pursuant to the approval of the speaker, and no one can get an answer out of the speaker ever since. Not myself, not the standing not the, the standing committee, not reporters or anyone for that matter. Importantly, you say that you're being blocked from testifying about all this before India's parliamentary panel of for information technology. So you've had no response at all from the Lok Sabha speaker. That's that's correct. It, it was publicly reported that the standing committee voted unanimously to, to to invite me. No, everyone from both the BJP and the Congress agreed, which I'm sure must have been very difficult in this day and age. This isn't a partisan political issue. It's an Indian political issue. I've been interviewed by NDTV before. I've also been interviewed by Republic TV before. I mean, the only public official in all of India who is blocking my testimony is opposed to my testimony. It's the Honorable Speaker, and he's not explaining why. Now, Facebook has dismissed your allegations. They claim that combating coordinated inauthentic behavior is their priority and that they are addressing the problems of fake engagements. How do you look at their response? This is a standard Facebook response in that it appears to contradict me without actually doing so. I'm going to use an analogy to explain. So, suppose, that suppose that tomorrow my girlfriend complains to me, Sophie, you said you would wash the dishes, but there are still dishes in the sink that are dirty. What happened? And I respond by saying, Combating the problem of dirty dishes is always important to me. I always prioritize wa washing dishes. I, I work hard to wa wash dishes. I have spent invested $50 in cleaning supplies over the past year. All this may be true, but it does not, and it may appear to contradict her question, but it does not actually. It is, a, it is a classic dodge, and it does not actually answer the question, did I wash the dishes last night or not? Well, from what I understand, Sophie, Facebook has this problem of wanting to suck up to ruling parties in many countries but what does that actually mean for democratic engagement in this day and age so just a quick correction 
With regards to political interference and sucking up to ruling parties, the worst of it that I, I found was in India. Nowhere else did this happen, that Facebook approved a takedown and then suddenly changed its mind after, after, after finding a connection to a sitting MP. In, in Azerbaijan, in Honduras, when I caught the governments of those countries red-handed, it took time for Facebook to act, but they eventually did act, and they eventually did publicize those takedowns, but not in India. And I always heard anecdotally within the company that, that, that political interference from leadership was the worst within India. Facebook has built, a, has, has built a system in India in which there is justice for the average person, for the amadmi, and impunity for the rich and influential, and that is no justice at all. It is a, that is the perversion of justice. It is a hallmark of dictatorships such as, as the People's Republic of China, in which in, in which in which the, the common people are oppressed by the system and the ruling party has impunity. There's an infamous quote from a Latin American dictator: "For my friends, everything; for my enemies, the law." And that is a society that Facebook is building in India. Democracy cannot survive if we allow it to continue. Fascinating. Sophie Zhang, thanks very much for joining us on NDTV tonight. Thank you.